before it drops back down later in the week. So enjoy today. Get outside and do something. Um, let's go ahead and stand and get ready to worship God this morning. And I'll start us off with a word of prayer today. Lord, Lord, we thank you so much for this beautiful day, Lord God. We thank you that you are here with us, Lord God, that that uh, you said your word where two or three or more are gathered in your name, Lord God, you're in their midst. And so Lord, we thank you that you are here with us today, Father. Lord, we ask that you'll have your way in this time of worship, in this time in the word, Lord God. Have your way today, Lord God. Make yourself known in such a, a sweet way in our lives, Father. I pray that you'll draw us closer to you. Lord, we give you this time of worship, and we ask you to be glorified in this time. In Jesus' name I pray. Just a reminder, the altar area is always open. If you want to come on up and worship, uh, that's great. Um, if you uh, That way, if you feel like moving a little bit, you can move a little bit. Oh, so come on up and join us. Come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come all you sinners, come find his mercy, take care of your fable, he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness, find what you're looking for. For God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in him will live forever. We praise you, Lord. We thank you, God that you sent your one and only Son to take away our sins, to bear a burden that we could no longer bear ourselves, Lord. We worship you today. Have your way in this place. And bring all your failures, bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting there with open arms. For God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in him will live forever. The power of hell is forever defeated. Now it is well, I'm walking in freedom. For God so loved, God so loved the world. God so loved, for God so loved the world that he gave us. His one and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in him will live forever. The power of hell is forever defeated. Now it is well. I'm walking in freedom. For God so loved, God so loved the world. Praise God. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, praise Him, for the wonders of His love. And praise God, praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, praise Him. For the wonders of his love. God so loved the world that he gave us. His one and only 
Son to save us. Whoever believes in Him will live forever. The power of Him forever defeated. Now it is well. I'm walking in freedom for God so loved. God so loved the world. For God so loved. For God so loved the world that He gave us, His one and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in Him will live forever. The power of hell forever defeated. Now it is well. I'm walking in freedom. For God so loved, God so loved the world. And bring all your failures, bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting there with open arms. We praise you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We thank you that you take our burdens, you take our praises, Lord God. You take everything that we have to give you. We worship you, God. You were the word at the beginning. One with God, the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater, and what can separate us now? What a wonderful name it is, what a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ our King. What a wonderful name it is. Oh, nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. Death could not hold the veil tore before you. You silenced the boast of sin and grief. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. You have no rival. You have no equal, now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory, yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is, what a powerful name. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. 
nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is the name of jesus and death could not hold you the veil tore before you silence the bones of sin and grief the heavens are roaring the praise of your glory for you are raised to life again and you have no rival lord you have no evil for now and forever god you reign yours is the kingdom lord yours is the glory and yours is the name above all names what a powerful name it is what a powerful name it is the name of jesus christ my king what a powerful name it is Oh, nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is the name of jesus what a powerful name it is the name of jesus what a powerful name it is the name of jesus would you give the lord a hand clap of praise we praise you there's no one else like you Lord. there's no one else like you Lord. you are holy and set apart we worship you today I'm caught up in your presence Oh, I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. And I'm not here for blessings, just to be with you, Lord. Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you. And I'm sorry when i've just gone through the motions i'm sorry when i just sang another song take me back to where we started i open up my heart to you and i'm sorry when I've come with my agenda, I'm sorry. When I forgot that you're enough, take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. I'm caught up in your presence. Oh, I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. And I'm not here for blessings. Oh, Jesus, you don't owe me anything. And more than anything that you can do, I 
just want you. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else will do. I just want you. Lord, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else. Make it your prayer this morning. I just want you. Just close yourself off with the Lord this morning. Forget all the other distractions going on in your life. Let's just focus on the Lord right now. Give him our worship. I just want you. Lord, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. Get caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. We're here just to gather with you, Lord. I'm not here for blessings. Jesus, you don't owe me anything. More than anything that you can do, I just want you. That's all we want, Lord. We're just here to worship you today, God. We seek your presence. Our time with you, God, more than anything else, we worship you. I'm calling on the God of Jacob Whose love endures through generations And I know that you will keep your covenant I'm calling on the God of Moses the one who opened up the ocean. And I need you now to do the same thing for me. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh, rock, oh, rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness, on your faithfulness. I'm calling on the God of Mary whose favor rests upon the lowly and I know with you all things are possible and I'm calling on the God of David who made a shepherd boy courageous and i may not face goliath but i've got my own giants oh god my god i need you oh god my god i need you now 
how I need you now. Oh, rock, oh, rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness, on your faithfulness. Oh, God, my God, I need you. Oh, God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh, rock, oh, rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness, on your faithfulness. I praise you. You never let us down, Lord, and you never will, Lord. When we cry out to you, you're there, Lord. You heard your children then. You hear your children now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You answered prayers back then. And you will answer now. Because you are the same God. You are the same God. You were providing then. You are providing now. You are the same God. You are the same God. And you moved in power then. God moved in power now. Because you are the same God. You are the same God. You were a healer then. You are a healer now. And you are the same God. You are the same God. You were a Savior then. You are my Savior now. You are the same God. You are the same God. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faith. Cry out to God this morning. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faithfulness. Just praise the Lord right now in your own words. We don't need words on a screen to praise our God. Just tell God how much he means to you today. Thank him for what he's done for you. Praise him for who he is. You are all powerful, God. There is no one else who can even come close to your glory, God. You were set apart high above everything else, Lord. Oh, God, my God, I need you. Oh, God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh, rock, oh, rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faithfulness. One more time. Oh, God, my God, I need you. Oh, God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh, rock, oh, rock of ages. I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faithfulness. Lord, we thank you for your promises, Lord God. We thank you that they are yes and amen, Lord God, that they 
that you'd never lie. Lord, I was just, I was just, we were, I was just in uh, 1 Samuel this last week, Lord, and as, as Samuel was talking to, to Saul, you said that God is not man, that he would change his mind. Lord, you're not like us, that we change our mind, that we lie, that we, we decide to go a different way, Lord God. You, Lord, your yes is yes and your no is no. Your promises are always true. So, Lord God, this morning as we're worshiping you, Lord God, we want to thank you for those things that you've promised us, Lord God. Lord, you never promised that life would be easy, but you promised that you would be with us. Lord, you never promised that 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 we would that that we would never have sickness, but you said you would be our healer. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for what you have said. We thank you that you're our provider, Lord. I thank you that that when you brought Israel out of Egypt, Lord God, that that you made sure that they were fed, that you, you could do that then, you can do that now, Lord God. You can make sure that we have a spiritual bread that we need every day. Lord, I thank you for your promises. Lord, I thank you for that. This morning, I want us to, if there's any promises that you feel like maybe God has forgotten about, I want you to bring those promises to God. I want you to bring these promises, bring these things, bring these issues that you're carrying that that you know God wants you to give to Him. I want us to go ahead and and just come to the altar and, and bring Him the things that we need to bring Him this morning. Thinking back to the word that we had last week. Somebody else came up to me after church and said, Pastor Matt, I felt like it was a, I got this picture of a golden retriever that he loves to bring gifts to their masters. I had a cat, loved to bring dead animals to my mom and dad. The cat was thrilled, my mom was not. But sometimes our gifts to God are like that. We're thrilled to bring it to him, and he's thrilled to receive them, even if he throws it away. So this morning, let's bring our needs. Let's bring these things that that we need to give to God. Let's bring it to God this morning. I don't know what that means for you. What God may be wanting me to bring may be something completely different than what he's wanting you to bring this morning. But Lord, here are, here are the things that you've promised us. Lord, you promised that you never leave us nor forsake us. Lord, you promised that, Lord God. You promised that we could have eternal life through your Son. So whatever you're, whatever you're holding on to this morning, I want to encourage you to go ahead and bring it to God this morning. As I'm talking, go ahead and come on up. The altars are open. I want everybody to go. I I think everybody has something, even if it's something really little. I want everybody to go ahead and come on up, start coming up to the altar. Start making your way. Join me up front. Giving these gifts to God this morning. Love's like a hurricane. I am the tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory. I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. And oh, how he loves us so. Oh, how he loves us. 
how he loves us so and oh how he loves us so oh how he loves us how he loves us so he is jealous for me and he is jealous for me and loves like a hurricane and i am the tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy when all of a sudden i am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory i realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me and oh how he loves us so oh how he loves us how he loves us so and oh how he loves us so oh how he loves us how he loves us so yeah he loves us that you love us. Lord, I thank you that your promises are true. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that as we come and we present whatever we have to present to you, Lord God, Lord, you receive them, you take it, Lord God. Lord, I thank you that as we come and we give our sin to you, if it's sin, as we give our anxiety to you, if it's anxiety, if as we give um, whatever it is, Lord God, to you, Lord God, that you take it, Lord God, that we don't have to take it back. We don't have to put it back on, Lord God, that we are free from these things in Jesus name Lord our hope is not in ourselves our hope is in you and Lord I thank you for that today Lord God and I rejoice in that today Lord this morning as we're wrapping up worship and we're praying Lord God I, I want to lift up all the all the all the war that's going on around the world we saw in the, on the news the attack on Israel last night, Lord God. We look on the news and we see the war in the Ukraine, Lord God. We see on the news the the war that's going on in the Gaza Strip as well, Lord God. We, we see the news, Lord God. But Lord, we know, Lord God, that you love every single person that's caught in the middle of these struggles. And Lord, we cry out to you and we ask you, Lord God, for peace. We ask you, Lord God, for peace. And not only in the Middle East, but around the world, Lord God. Lord, I come, Lord, we cry out to you and we ask any, we ask the Lord God that any leader that is intentionally doing this for whatever reasons, Lord God, Lord, I pray that you will, that you will bring an end to this warfare, Lord God. Lord, that you will make yourself known in these areas. In Israel, Lord God, we cry out to you and we ask that they will turn to you as their Messiah. That their eyes will be open to who Jesus is. Lord, I pray for the Muslims in the Middle East that they also will, will, their eyes will be opened to who is the real God and the real Savior. 
Lord, we cry out to you, Lord God, for Russia and Ukraine, Lord God, that you will bring a, a solution there, Lord God, that you bring peace there, Lord God. Protect your people. Lord, we ask you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, worship team, for leading us into the throne room of God this morning. If our ushers can go ahead and start making your way forward, and as they are, I just want to let you guys know, I, th- I want to thank those, a lot of you guys, you, you sat up front this morning, and I appreciate that. Uh, I, would, I want to just remind you that the back underneath the overhang is really more geared towards our guests and those that really uh, uh, that may have kids in the nursery or someone or people that just may uh, need to get to the bathroom really quick or, or sick. So um, if you if we could have uh, fr- from here on out have everybody that can move up from underneath the overhang. Uh, you guys are great this morning. Uh, Kay made a, a slide that says Pastor Matt is lonely. Please move up. I don't know if you saw that one. I think we chose the other one, but uh, I, I really I feel like last few weeks our worship has has been God's been moving in our worship, but I think part of it is because we're all close together. There's some there's a dynamic there when we can hear each other's voices, because guess what? That means that you're not the you don't feel like you're the only one singing. Like oh, uh, the person two rows behind me is worse singer than I am, so I can sing loud too. This is awesome. Or, or dance or worship or whatever. So I want to encourage you guys just to keep keep coming up. Uh, the lights were off at the beginning of the service in the back for that reason, just to sort of encourage people to come to the front. Um, if that was an inconvenience to anybody, I apologize. Uh, but we're, uh, we're just experimenting with some ways to help encourage us to move up. So um, with that, let's go ahead and pray over the offering, and then we will have some announcements. Lord, I thank you for what it says in your word, Lord God, about giving, Lord God, that we, we don't come to give with um, uh, under, com, un, uh, under compulsion or, or, or uh, under compulsion or, or being forced to give, but Lord, we come with a thankful heart that we can give to you. Lord, we thank you for what it says in Malachi, Lord God, about how we can test you in this, that you will throw open the floodgates of heaven over our lives as we give our tithe. Lord, I pray, Lord God, for our lives that you will throw open the floodgates of heaven, not just financially, but in every area of our lives as we give our tithe to you today. Lord, I pray you'll use this tithe to advance your kingdom, to do the work that you have called this church to do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning. It is good to be in the house of the Lord today. If you are a visitor with us, we would love to welcome you. We have a, a bag for you on your, if you got one coming in. If you didn't, grab one on your way out. Just kind of nice uh, gift from us to you saying welcome. Uh, we would also love to connect with you. So if you would love to, uh, we would love to do that. You can go ahead and text welcome to 765-300-3061. That helps us stay in connection with you, you with us. It's a nice way to know what's going on. Um, like our life groups, they are in full swing. We have three life groups currently that are throughout the week, different times of the month, different times of the day. If you have questions about that, definitely grab your um, bulletin. It's got all the information in there about the groups, the leaders. And if you have other questions that aren't answered, feel free to see Pastor Matt. He's probably got all the answers and then some. So. We would love to invite you to do that. We have two conferences coming up. We have a men's conference and we have a women's conference. The stand men's conference is April 20th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Registration does close tomorrow. So if you um, want to get that cheaper cost, definitely go ahead and do that tonight, tomorrow during the day sometime. Um, It is $55. Lunch is included. Um, $25 for a student, so I think 16 and under maybe 18 and under for a student. Um, And that is in Greenwood, just get some carpools together, all that good stuff. We also have our Women's Regional Encounter. That is the following weekend. So Saturday, April 27th, 10 to 3 p.m. 
Um, online registration for that one actually closes the 17th. So it's coming up pretty, pretty soon as well. Um, it's $50 online. If you pay ahead of time, 60 at the door. Um, and again, we would also we got some carpools, make it easy for you guys to get there. It is just in Muncie, so it's not too terrible of a drive. Um, one more announcement. We do have coming up, and this is going to, we're going to try and have a monthly event of this, but on April 26th, from 7 to 8 p.m., we are having acoustic worship night. It's going to be up at the gazebo, place with the picnic, picnic tables up there. It's going to be up there. <laughs> it is going to be an acoustic worship uh, evening. Um, 7 to 8 p.m. In case of bad weather, we will go inside, so don't worry. Um, but, and I don't know, I'm pretty proud of this. This is actually being led by Adam Cannon. So if you have questions, comments, concerns, requests, definitely go ahead and see Adam. He would love to uh, answer any questions you might have. And uh, we hope to see you guys out for that acoustic worship night as well. I forgot one more announcement. Um, on Wednesday, uh, we are going to be voting on selling two things, the piano and, the, and one of our vans. So uh, if you have any questions or concerns or whatever, you can come out Wednesday night. But we're going to be taking a vote on that. It's just part of our bylaws. It, became, it came to my attention that to sell what they call chattel, which is not cattle, it is just any movable, major movable items in our church, we have to get a majority vote by the membership. So if you're a member and you want to have your say on that, come on out. doesn't mean we're not voting on bringing the piano back in. We're voting on whether to sell it or not. So um, just wanted to make you aware of that. So come on out Wednesday night for that. We're going to do that first thing, and then I'm going to have a, a teaching that night as well, and we'll have a time of prayer. So it'll be a good night regardless, uh, not just because of the vote. We're going to have a great night anyway. So um, and then men, I want to encourage you. I just want to, uh, this is one last uh, pitch for the men's conference. If you're not sure about if you want to go or not, listen, I want to, I want to highly encourage you to consider going. It is going to be a great time. Uh, it is not uh, super religious. Like, like there's a lot of guys that will come on their motorcycles and they're, they'll be wearing hats. And it's just, it's a, it's a guy's guy type of night, type of day. There's giveaways. There's, uh, we had barbecue, Chick-fil-A, and something else last year for lunch. They had axe throwing, uh, just an axe throwing competition and, and other stuff like that. They had a mechanical bull, which was funny. I got some videos of my boys doing that last year. And so uh, come on out and join us. If you are planning on going, if you've already signed up, uh, please, there's a sign-up sheet in the back. That's just more to let us know you're going. So that way we know how many cars we need lined up to get people there. So uh, if you want to drive yourself, you can drive yourself. But I would encourage you to ride with some other guys. It's always a good, that's always a big part of the trip is just riding there with other guys. So, all right, with that, I'm going to, we're going to take a moment to greet each other. So if you want to go and stand up and, and turn around and say hi to someone, that'd be great.
Oh, good morning, good morning. What a good day it is. Good morning, good morning. I'm excited about what God is wanting to say to us this morning. So um, if you have your Bibles, I just want to let you know I'm going to be kind of all over the place. Not really. Um, We're going to be in 1 John 4 quite a bit. And they do not have everything that I had. Brain, can you go get my computer? It's on my desk. Thank you. So my app is supposed to talk to my iPad. Apparently, it didn't talk to my iPad. So I'm like, I don't have everything in here. So uh, we're get, he's going to get that for me. But we're going to be in First John quite a bit this morning. Uh, I was so thrilled with how things went last week. Um, who enjoyed the eclipse? Everybody had burn any holes in their eyes by looking straight at the sun before time? No? Okay. Good. Um, thank you, buddy. Uh, we had a blast. We were able to go to one of Braden's friends' house for that, and they had a bunch of people over, and it was it was a good time. My parents came in town for that. My mom, uh, she, the last eclipse that they had, it went through Omaha, but that's where they live, and um, it was cloudy and rainy and stormy that day. And so she's like, I'm not missing this one. And so she she actually initially made reservations in Evansville, and then she found out it was hitting us just as good as Evansville. She's like, I'm going to cancel my hotel reservations. I'm going to come up and stay with you guys. We're like, all right, come on up. So we had a good time with them. Uh, we also last week had a great time with Steve helping with the message last week. That was a blessing. It was a great time. Uh, you know, got he asked me a question that, that I wasn't anticipating, and it was... You guys heard a, a very honest answer, and so I just want to elaborate just a little bit on it in case you have any questions. When I said for the most part, when he says, "Are these is this a word of God?" Uh, I feel like it is for the most. And why it's me by the most part is when I was growing up, my dad always said, "Leave room for it being your opinion." So don't ever say, "Thus saith the Lord" to anybody, because what if you're off? And then they ha- there's no room for them to say, no, that's off, because you said, this is from God. Does that make sense? So I think most of the messages I preach is from God. I spend a lot of time in prayer. There are times I preach messages that I really don't want to preach. To be honest with you, I have wrestled with some of them, and, and it's because God has told me, you need to preach this. I'm like, I don't want to preach this. I want to preach this. He's like, it doesn't matter what you want. This is what I want you to say to my people. Today, So I just want you to be aware that that does happen from time to time. And so uh, I just want to elaborate more on that that phrase for the most part. Does that make sense? Understand where I'm coming from there. Also, uh, I, I didn't really see it from where you're coming from. Apparently, Pastor Chris did. He said, actually, what I heard it as is if you're having a hard time hearing the voice of God, you can come on a Sunday morning when God is, is speaking to us. And so... That's also uh, just a way that we can look at it. Uh, but I don't want to put so much pressure on myself saying this, I am the prophet or whatever. I'm not. I, I, I just I try to preach what I feel like God is saying to us as a church. So this morning we're going to be looking a little bit further at it. We're going to be looking a little deeper. Uh, the title of today's message is, is Knowing the Father's Heart. So last week we looked at hearing His voice. This week we're going to look at what is his heart towards us? What is his heart towards us? For some reason, we have this idea in our world that God is this angry being who is out to punish us. And yes, he does get angry. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say, our oh, God never gets angry. He's always happy-go-lucky. He's a jolly old man in the sky. I don't think that that's the case. I do know that he gets angry. We see evidence of it in the Bible. We see evidence of it when he gets frustrated with his people in Israel. And he says, you have been you have been neglecting me. You have been rejecting me. You have been worshiping other idols. You've been worshiping other gods. You've been sacrificing your children to Moloch. 
this is enough. I'm going to bring punishment. This nation is going to come against you and you're going to be destroyed. I'm going to send you all to Babylon in slavery. For the most part, I'll leave a remnant behind because I need to punish you. And I believe that God punishes those he loves. But I also don't think he's a God that's only punishing those he loves. Does that make sense? When I'm with my kids... When I'm with my fam, with my boys, or with, even with my dog, I'm not always punishing them because I love them. I'm also loving on them because I love them. Does that make sense? I'll give my sons a hug. I'll, I'll, I'll allow my dog to sit on my lap, even though she drives me nuts sometimes. And I'll, I'll, I'll give her some pets. I'm not always, I'm not an, always an angry dad, just like God is not always an angry. God, or an angry father as well. So I do believe he does get angry, but he is not always angry. He's not always out to punish us. We need to remember that it says in 1 John 4, 16, that God is love. It says this in the whole verse. It says, we know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in his love. God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. While we do need a father, while we do need to fear God, and the fact that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, we fear Him in a sense of awe and wonder. But what's amazing is that in spite of this, His love for us is much bigger than we can fathom. I don't want to say we don't need to fear God. Uh, Listen, I'm I'm getting somewhere, but I I do want to understand the fear of God is, more, is not just a terror of God. It is an awe and wonder of God. Now, people who don't know Jesus should be in terror of God because they are going to, they are going to face His wrath, His punishment for all eternity, and that should scare the living daylights out of us. But once we become children of Him, it's not so much a terror as, as, as it is a, much, a, a sense of wonder and awe of our God because of how great and how awesome he is. So we fear him in the sense of awe and wonder, but what's amazing is that in spite of this, his love for us is much bigger than we can fathom. So much so that he had to have a way for us to be with him. And that is what we see John 3.16, or sorry, John 14.6. We're going to look at 3.16 later. 14.6 says, Jesus told them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Let's look at this verse a little closer. Let's see it differently than we may have seen it before. The the Father made a way to Himself through Jesus. There was no real way to God. We saw, I talked about this briefly on Easter, about how when Jesus died, the the, 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 uh, curtain was torn in two in the temple. That curtain was there to separate all of us from God, not just from His God, but from dying due to His due to the overwhelmingly overwhelming glory that was in behind that curtain. It was to protect us from Him, not so much Him from us. But when Jesus died, Jesus became that that He became the way that we go through to get to G, to get to God, to know Him. Because He wants to know you. You see, Jesus made a way because God said, I want to know every single person that is ever going to live. And the only way to Him is through Jesus. Jesus isn't only acting as the gatekeeper, but He's also acting as the path to the Father. So the first thing that we need to understand is that the Father wants to be with us. The Father wants to be with us. We need to get that. I, I, that's why at first I said, we, we talked about how a lot of times we think that this God is angry and we don't want to get near Him because if we get too close to Him, we're going to get His wrath. And, and we see this, this perverted idea of how God is. But in reality, God wants to be with you. He wants to be with all of us. Just think about that for a second. 
Seriously, I want to pause for the next 15 to 20 seconds. And I want you to think to yourself, God wants to be with me. Just think about that. Just, let's just take a second. I'm going to stop talking for the next 20 seconds. Just in your own heart, in your own mind, just, just, just come to terms with the fact that God wants to be with you. Father God wants to be with you. He doesn't want to be separate from you. He doesn't want to be away from you. He wants to be with you. Just like we want to be with our friends, God wants to be with us. When He knows you're about to go spend time with Him in prayer, I imagine that He is just as excited about this time as you probably are. He's like, I can't wait for Matt to be with me. I can't wait for this time. He said he's going to meet me here. I'm excited. You know, when I go meet with someone for lunch, majority of the time, there are times I mess up, and majority of the time I'm there early because I'm excited to see them get out of their car and meet me at the restaurant. Because I really want to be with people, and I love being with people, and, and I believe that God, He's there early waiting for you to show up in the room because He wants to be there with you. It says in John 3.16, For this is how God loved the world. He gave His one and only Son so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish, but have eternal life. The word for love here is this word in, in the Greek, which there's like three or four different words for love. And this one is agape, which... In its full, full meaning, it means to show love, to demonstrate love, to take pleasure in, to love based on its regarded value. God has, he, he, so when God so loves the world, when God so loves you, put your name in there for the world, for God so loved Matt Malik that He gave His one and only Son that, that I would not perish but have eternal life. God had so much pleasure in the thought of having a relationship with, with me, with you, with the world, with the human race. And he regards our value. He, he created us to, to, to be with Him. And so God has such a high regard for us, He takes so much pleasure in us that He literally sent His Son to make a way to Him for us. This verse, using this word, shows me, shows us that He wasn't pleased with the old system. In fact, it was the plan from the beginning of time, ever since Adam and Eve committed the first sin and caused there to be separation between us and the Father, for Jesus to be the one and only way for us to the Father. The second sin entered the world, God had a plan in place. We see in the Scriptures that a day is as a thousand years, a thousand years is as a day. So the Old Testament really isn't that long for God. He was making preparations. He was showing us our need for a Savior because the sacrifices that we had to make to be with God were not good enough. It was probably frustrating. Think about this. With Jesus, you can come and give all your sin to God. And then you can turn around and, and, and slip up. But guess what? He's ready to forgive you right away. In the old system, you make a sacrifice. And you go away and you slip up, you have to wait until the next sacrifice. That, that had to be frustrating. But God made a way so we could be with Him. Why? Because He loves us so much. God the Father and Jesus were willing to make the biggest sacrifice so that you could be with Him. His heart for us is filled with love. And because of this, He wants us to be with Him, to have access to Him, to hear His voice like we talked about last week, and to know Him. And when this happens, something awesome starts to take place. When we spend time with God, when we spend time in His presence, uh, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but when you spend a lot of time with someone who's got a lot of influence, 
suddenly you start to change a little bit, be more like them. I used to make fun of, uh, I knew people growing up, so I used to make fun of them where they would go to the north, they go up to New York, and they start to sound like a New Yorker. They go down to the south, and I can't do the southern accent, but they would start sounding from their, like from the deep heart of Tennessee. <laughs> I'd hate to see what, that, what would happen if they went to Scotland, because I went there once, and they were speaking English, but they were speaking another language because I couldn't understand where they were saying because their accent was so thick. We'd have a, a girl translate for us over there. And she was from Scotland, but she had a she didn't have as thick of an accent, so she was our translator. And, and so what I'm trying to say is there's some people that, that you see that, well, in the same way when we're with God, something in us needs to change. The more time we spend with God, the more we're going to change. The more we spend in His presence, spend with Him, the more we're going to change. We're going to become like Him. Let's go back to 1 John 4, but let's look at the next few verses. So in verse 16 it says, We know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in His love. God is love. And all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. Verse 17 says this, And we live in God. Our love grows more perfect, so we will not be afraid on the day of judgment, but we can face Him with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. So love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment. And this shows that we have not fully experienced this perfect love. We love each other because He first loved us. We see three things here. When we are with God and know His love, we will begin to live like Jesus here in this world. How did Jesus live? One thing that we see in Jesus' life that is very common was that He had compassion for the hurting. It says in Matthew 14, 14, when Jesus landed, he landed, so he was on one side of the lake. He did a lot, a lot of miracles. I think he even fed the 5,000. And then he goes across the lake, and when he landed, he saw a large crowd. Sure, he was tired after sailing across that ocean, and or not ocean, but the sea, or the Sea of Galilee, or it's not, whatever. It was like a big lake. It wasn't the ocean. That would have been a long trip. He had compassion on them and healed their sick. Jesus saw people that were needy and that were hungry and that were sick. And he took time out of his schedule to be with them. He had compassion. So the more we're with Jesus, the more we're going to see ourselves having compassion. The more we're going to see in ourselves Desiring to, to see God move in these lives and, and have compassion on people. When we're with God and we know His love, like I said, we will begin to live like Jesus here in this world. And Jesus, He also, He did what He saw His Father doing. John fifteen nineteen says, Jesus gave them His answer, Very truly I tell you, the Son can do nothing by Himself. He can only do what he sees his father doing. Because whatever the father does, the son also does. When they, we spend time with God, we will begin to do what we see our father doing. The more you spend with him, the more you're going to know his voice. The more you know his voice, the more you can follow his instructions. I remember... I remember coming back and God had really rocked my world at this revival in Pensacola, Florida. So much so that I changed my whole plans for college. Changed the whole plans of all my life. And I remember riding around our neighborhood. My mom was driving me somewhere. I don't remember where. They even taken me to church. And I saw people. My heart just broke. Like I had this sense of 
I, I was feeling what God was feeling for those people I saw. It, it was so intense. I started crying in the car and just started praying for them. We didn't have time to stop for me to talk to them because we're going pretty quick, but I just started praying for them. And, and I felt like God said, that is my heart for all people who don't know me. My heart is broken for them. The more we spend with God, the more our heart's going to be broken for those that don't know Jesus. And so we're going to see what God's doing. We're going to do what God's asking us to do. And, and we're going to take steps of faith because it's going to be easier. You know, Peter, he spent a lot of time with Jesus. He saw Jesus walking on the water, so he wanted to do what Jesus was doing. He said, come on, tell me to come on out and I'll come out. And he did. And sometimes we're going to get out on the water we're going to, and we're going to get distracted. Listen, you're going to mess up maybe at times. You're going to get distracted. You're going to see the waves. You're going to see all this stuff going on around you. And you're going to take your eyes off Jesus and you're going to start to sink. But Peter, he didn't, get, he didn't allow pride to get in the way. He, he looked back at Jesus and said, help. And Jesus reached down his hand and picked him back up. The more we spend with God, the more time we spend with God, the more we're going to be like Him. We're going to want to do what He's telling us to do. Another thing that we see here, so the first thing we saw here is that we need to live like Jesus here in this world. Second thing we see is that we will not know fear. The fear in this verse is the word phobo, phobos. Phobos. In Greek, where we get the word phobia. But this word can actually be used in two ways. One that will cause a terror. So if you have a phobia of a spider, arachnophobia, and you see a spider, you're going, it's going to petrify you. It's going to scare you. I think there are some people in this world, that, and, and they actually have a phobia of God. They are terrified of God because they're not living for Him. There's a terrified, they're, they're terrified, uh, they think this God is out to punish them, and He really doesn't want to punish them, He wants to bring them to Him. But if they reject Him, He's got no choice but to punish them. Does that make sense? So there is a terror, but those who know Jesus, the word, uh, the, there's another phrasing, there's another way to talk about this fear, and, and it's, it's, it's one, like I mentioned earlier, that is awe and, 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 and wonder, and it is the same word that is used in the Hebrew. So the Hebrew didn't use the Greek. Okay, don't, I don't want you to get this wrong, with, uh, misunderstanding here. But, but the word that, so they, they translated some of the Hebrew into Greek for the Septuagint. And I believe the same word that is used for fear in Proverbs 9.10 is the same word that's used here about terror. But it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of the one of the Holy One is understanding. That is a proper piety and awe. Where we we are in awe and we we do fear him, but it's healthy. It's healthy. We're we're afraid of we're afraid of displeasing him. Not that he's this horrible, ugly, mean God, but but I don't want to displease anybody that I'd really love. I don't want to displease God. I want to do what He's calling me to do. But you're not going to know the fear, the terror fear that we had before we knew Jesus. What John is saying here is that we no longer have to be in terror of God and what will happen when we die because Jesus has taken our punishment for us. Separation from God for eternity is not in our future if you know Jesus. You don't have to worry about that anymore. But those who don't know Jesus do. So the first thing we saw is that we can live like Jesus on this earth. The second thing we see in these verses is that we will not know fear that will separate us from God and be in terror of God or the, that He has taken the punishment for us. And the third thing is that when we know God's love, we will love each other. Not with a fake love, but with a real love. One that will not gossip, or backbite, one that is talked about in 1 John 4, 20-21, whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. Whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen 
cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command, anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. I appreciate the love I get from people in my life because I'm not perfect. And when we love each other with this type of love, that even when we do something silly or we make a mistake, we're still going to love each other. Even if I, I don't do this, I don't think I've ever done this, but even if I put the plastics on the bottom rack in the dishwasher and my wife gets mad because all the plastic melted, she's still going to love me. Because we have a love for each other. She'd be upset with me and then we have to go buy a bunch of new plastic dishes, but she's still going to love me. In the same way, we need to love each other. In love, real love, It will not gossip. It will not backbite. It will want the best for each other. And so by knowing God, like we said, or like I started talking about earlier, I want to elaborate a little bit more on this. By knowing God, it will change us. Knowing God will change us. It will. It's going to be something... That is phenomenal. We will become like Him. It will change us from the inside out. And the reality is, the way we're going to be changed is the way that we were created to be from the very beginning. We will be changed to how we're supposed to be. We will be changed to how we were really meant to be. I love reading through the whole Bible because you see the whole story. You see from the beginning to the end. You see the, uh, the full idea of what God wanted for you and for me. God did not want us to have to come to Him and have to have a sacrifice for our sins. He wanted to have fellowship with us from the very beginning. That's why He created man. He didn't create man so we'd be separated from Him. He created us so that we could be with Him. We see this throughout the Scripture. It says in Luke 6, 43 through... Lost my spot. Luke 6, 43 through 45, a good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. A tree is identified by its fruit. Figs are never gathered from thorn bushes and grapes are not picked from bramble bushes. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. When we follow Jesus and get to know God better, he, we will no longer be the dead tree. will no longer be an apple tree that's no longer producing apples. We'll be connected to the real source of life and we'll suddenly we'll be doing what we were meant to do all along. If an apple tree is not producing apples, something is wrong and it needs to be fixed. In our lives, God doesn't want to change us so that we're He's like, well, I'm not pleased with how they are. No, really what he sees is who you're supposed to be, and he wants to bring that into life. See, I think that a lot of people think that when we become Christians, God wants to change us, and we're like, we don't really want to be changed. That's not the case. Really what he wants to do is he wants to bring the life that was supposed to be there out of you. You who were once dead will become alive. It says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. When we spend time with God, life will happen. It will continue to happen. We'll continue to grow and be more like Him. Philippians 1.6 says, And I am certain that God, who began a good work within you, will continue His work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. In Ephesians 4, 22-24, it says, Throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. 
Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. God wants you to be the man and woman that He's created you to be. And you can only get there by spending time with Him. Yes, getting saved, saying a prayer, turning your life over to God, that really helps. There's going to be an uprooting and replanting season in your life sometimes where God may have to take you out of, a, of the poisonous, ugly, dead situation and plant you by streams of living water, which is Him. So you can flourish. So you can have life. I had trees a lot of trees in our last property in Evansville. And the trees that grew the quickest, we had a little pond with the ones right next to the pond. They're the ones that drove me the most nuts. Because they weren't trees I wanted to see grow, but they were the ones that grew quickly. So we had to be on top of it. They weren't very old, but they would just shoot up. But I also believe some of the, uh, some of the healthiest trees on our property we're a distance away from our little body of water and whose roots have gone deep. And see, God, He wants your roots to go deep, and by spending time with Him, your roots will go deep, and you will become a new, you'll become a new creation. You'll suddenly become an oak tree that was weak because you didn't have to work too hard for your water to suddenly this towering, massive oak tree that produces shade for every house around you because your roots go deep. It's like the mustard seed that Jesus talks about. It can start as a small seed, then suddenly it, it produces shade for every living thing in the garden. God wants you to have life. He wants you to, to flourish. And that, to do that, you have to spend time with Him. You must be with Him. And he, It's not like he, He's like, fine, I'll, I'll, I'll pencil in an hour a week for you. But instead, He, he will spend as much time with you as you want to spend with Him. Honestly, our growth is determined by us. The growth you have in God is determined by you. It's not determined by God. It's determined by the amount of time you want to spend with Him, allowing Him to pour into you. So I want to challenge us today, that as we spend time learning to hear His voice, as we spend time with Him to take more time. This last week I asked you guys to spend five minutes a day with just trying to hear the voice of God. I want to encourage you, if you've done that religiously this last week, and I, I, listen, I use the word religiously just so that we've done it, we're very consistent. I don't want to be religious in how we do this. You can spend time with God, you can spend time in prayer and never hear from God. You can spend the whole time talking. What I'm saying is we need to spend five minutes listening to God, praying, have the Bible open. Listen, the Word of God is one way that He'll, is the main way He's going to speak to us. He's never going to contradict what it says in His Word. So spend time in His Word. Listen to it. Read it. But if you spent five minutes, I want to challenge you to spend seven this next week. Add two more minutes. If you want to add more than that, you add as much as you want. If you want to go, I'm just going to go nuts this week. I'm going to spend an hour every day, two hours, three hours. I have a two hour drive, an hour drive to work, an hour drive home, whatever. If you drive that far to work, then spend the whole time just listening to the Bible and praying. Whatever you want to do. But increase it every week. Spend more time with Him. We serve a God who wants to know you. Who wants to see you become who you were created to be. Not the old corrupt self that once lived or that you possibly are living as, but a person who these scriptures talk about. Not only does God want to know you, He wants to know those around us as well. The closer you get to the Father, the more you will see His heart for those hurting in our world. And the fact that He's looking for workers to go into the field to bring these people home Introducing them to what they were also created for, that is to worship God. 
We are living in strange times. And we really don't know how long we have till Jesus calls us home and He comes back. We may have an hour. He may come back in the next hour. And it may be another thousand years or more. We don't know. But we need to live every day. Spend time with Him every day. We need to live every day as if it could be our last or we have a whole lifetime to live. Ready for a lifetime? Growing for a lifetime, but ready for Him to return today. And that means that we we don't sit on the sidelines and let other people uh, continue to live in their sinful, deadly lifestyles. No, we need to introduce them to Jesus in a loving way. We need to show them who He is. And this all starts like we looked at last week by allowing ourselves to hear His voice, to know His voice, then to do what it says. And just like Jesus, when we get to know His voice and get to know Him better and better, it will be easier to do what He wants. In John 3, 5 through 9, Jesus says this, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to a spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants, just as you can hear the wind, but can't tell where it comes from or where it's going so you can't explain how the people are born of the Spirit. Today, do you know the Father? How is your relationship with Him? The only way to come to know Jesus is by Him drawing you to Himself. I believe that God is putting you in people's lives. Maybe you're in this room right now and you don't know Jesus, but you know that God is drawing you. Listen, the only way people in our lives can know Jesus is by by the Holy Spirit pulling them and bringing them to Himself. And He's put you in their life to help bring them to Himself. Today, do you know who the Father is? Do you know know the Father? How is your relationship with Him? He's not far away, but He is near. He is calling your name. How? How? Are you going to respond to Him today? I want everybody to go ahead and stand with me. I know that these sermons I've been preaching the last few days are just a little bit different than how I started out the year. As I was praying through the year and last month as I was just spending time with God asking Him what He wants this month to look like. I feel like the Holy Spirit said, I want you to show my people and teach them and let them know that I want to be with them. Because a lot of times we can get so caught up in the doing that we forget to be within the being. We forget to be with Him. We can spend so much time striving for God that we forget to rest and stop and be with God. I believe that's just as important as everything else. I believe the vision that He has for our church is important. That He wants us to go and He wants us to go win our city and and do things for Him, but at the same time He wants us to stop and take a breath and be with Him. Have a relationship with Him. Some of my favorite moments with people I love is just being with them. I do enjoy, to a point, don't tell my wife this, she's not in here, I do enjoy gardening and doing yard work with her to a point. I don't want her holding that over me. Just kidding. Because That means I'm also spending time with her. But I just love... Being in the same room as her. Talking. Enjoying each other's presence. Even watching a show. Whatever, we're together. Doing the wordle. Seeing who gets the best score. But I love to be with her. 
See, God, He wants us to be with Him. He wants us to do stuff with Him, but He also wants us to be with Him. He wants us to work with Him instead of for Him. So this month, we're going to be just taking, we're going to be taking a breath. We're going to just remember that God wants us just to know Him. And today, I, want, I just felt like I needed to share that He wants to know you. The King of all creation wants to know you. He loves you. He cares for you. So today, I, wanna, I want you to ask yourself, how well do you know the Father? Have you allowed yourself to know Him? To be loved by Him? To be close to Him? Or have you been so afraid that you've kept yourself at arm's length away because if you're afraid of getting too close because of what He might ask of you? Maybe you're afraid of, of, of uh, you're, maybe you're afraid of your life changing. But here's the thing, if you're living a life apart from God, it's not a life-filled life. It's a life filled with death. Doing life with God will bring real life to you. How are you going to respond to Him today? I want everybody to go ahead and bow your heads and close your eyes. If you're in this room today, and you're saying, Pastor Matt, I don't know God. I know about Him, but I really don't have a good relationship with Him. Maybe you're not saved. Maybe you've given your life to Jesus, but you really haven't spent time building the relationship with Him. You just haven't, you just, the idea of Him having this deep love for you is just kind of foreign to you. You're saying, Pastor Matt, I want to know Him better. I want to know the love He has for me. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand in this room. See those hands. Anybody else? See that hand. Anybody else? Don't be shy. This is just, you're not, you're, you're, this is, you're being honest between you and God. Say, God, I, I really don't know you like I need to know you. As I was writing this message, I realized there are times I don't even know Him as well as I need to know Him. And I had to say, God, I just need to know You deeper. I need to learn to rest, to not strive, to be with You in the middle of the busyness. It reminds me of the story of Jesus. If you haven't heard this one, go look it up. There's another time, you know, there's a time he walked on water. There's another time they were rowing across the lake. And a big storm came up. And Jesus was so comfortable with God that he was asleep in the boat. Some of you, you may be going through storms in your life. But Jesus is saying, come here. It's all good. You can rest in me in the middle of the storm. Lord, I pray for everybody in this room. Those that raise their hands, those that are saying, I just need to know you better, Jesus. I know I know you deeply. I know I know you in a well and a good manner, but Lord, I need to know you deeper. Lord, help us to know your voice. Help us to know who you are. Help us to realize that you do love us. 
that you do care for us. That we are your children and you just love spending time with me. Lord, help us to find more time in our schedules to spend time with you. Lord, I pray for those who are going through a storm, who are going through a rough season in their life. Lord, I pray that in this rough season, instead of feeling like we've got to be so wrapped up in doing stuff, that we can find our rest in you. Because you want to know us. You want to be with us. Lord, I pray for every person in this room that came to hear from Your Word. Lord, help us to know Your voice. Help us to know what You're saying to us. And obey it. But obey it knowing that we're walking with You. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bless you today with the promises of God which are yes and amen. Pray that the Holy Spirit will make you healthy and strong in your bodies, minds, and spirits to move in faith and expectancy. I pray that God's angels will be with you to protect you and keep you. I pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you today. That the Lord will make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. That the Lord will lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. I bless you today in the name of Jesus. Go and spend time with God this week. Help Him to pour out His Spirit on you to show you how much you are loved. I love you guys. Have a great week.